Let me give you a verse. Let me give you a verse. Job 33, verse 14 to 17. He said, For God speaketh once, yea, twice, yet man perceive it not. Wow. 15. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men in slumberings upon the bed, then he opened up the ears of men and sealed their instruction, who, that he may withdraw men from his purpose, from man's purpose, from vain purpose, from fleshly purpose. From political purpose, from antichrist purpose, and hide pride from man. How to dissect dreams? If you if you heard right now, you discover that dreams and visions generally are the same. Generally, generally are the same. Glory to God. You can spend time and show you some of the differences, but generally they are the same. The first thing to dissect a dream is to know that there are different types of dreams and visions. There are different types. It won't help you just to run off to say, I got a dream and here's what it means if you don't know the different categories of the different types of dreams. Anything with revelation cannot be done with ignorance. Because the Bible says without he said, it's, it says, it says without, without knowledge, men are destroyed for lack of, of knowledge. Uh, as well, we say men are destroyed also for lack of knowledge. But it also says in Proverbs 29, 18, where there is no vision, people perish. So we cannot be reckless to understand visions. And the first thing to know is the different types of vision. And the first type is one I call a causative. Causative. It means it's caused by something. It didn't just come straight from God. It didn't come from God. It came from our activity. It came from our relationships. It came from our, our experiences. Watching the television late in the night. It came from our fears. And it causes dreams, causative visions, causative dreams. Somebody said, how to dissect dreams. Causative, that's the first one. Jeremiah 29 verse 8. He said, for thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, let not your prophets and your diviners that be in the midst of you deceive you, neither hearken to the dreams which ye cause to be dreamed so it's not just the bad prophets you cause most folks whenever they get a dream they don't want to let it go they get upset if you can't spiritualize it they get upset if you tell them it's it's nothing it's 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 not from the devil but it's not from god it's just from your experience it's from your relationship you dream about your mother you dream about your father, you dream about your children, your daughter, your sister. You dream a lot about your pastor. A lot of folks dream a lot about their pastor because they hear him preach every time. He's at church, the pastor, they know where he sit. So they get a lot of dreams about the pastor. And even though it's the pastor, it's causative. Because you love your pastor, why you got that dream? Are you there? Are you concerned about your pastor, why you got that dream? Because you, you see him every week, you got that dream. Are you there? I'm sorry. Even though the pastor is not spiritual. Are you there? It's causative. Are you there? Glory to God. He said, you cause it. You cause yourself to dream the dream. So that, that dream did not come from God. It came because you were watching the program and something come up about it. Are you there? Say amen. amen. The second kind of dream is called a vain dream. A vain dream. A vain dream. A vain dream. It means it's non-spiritual, it's materialistic, it's fleshly, 
and it's without purpose, it doesn't mean that you're doing something bad or it's of the devil or you're just a vain person you're, or you're material. No, no, no. Just a dream. For even a mighty prophet, holy prophet, must know when he got a vain vision. Must know when he got a vain dream. Are you there with me? Glory to God. Glory to God. Ezekiel 13, verse 7. He said, have you not seen a vain vision? Wow. Oh, Bishop, you're stealing my... my. Mm. And have you not spoken a lying divination? Wow. Ooh. Whereas you say the Lord said it, albeit I have not spoken it. I believe it's a verse in Lamentations 3.37. It said, dare not anything come true if it didn't come from God. Lamentations 3, I believe, I believe 37. And is that so? Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Vain, 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 vain. Ezekiel 13, 10 and other scriptures. Ezekiel 13, 7. Jeremiah 23, 16. Zechariah 10, 2. Talks about vain vision. It's not from God. Listen to me carefully. Any vision that is from God or revelation that is from God, right, is fast. It, even if it is accurate, it can be not blessed by God because the Bible even speaks of a prophet in Deuteronomy 13 who will speak a vision and it seems to come to pass and after he's finished, he come and bring idolatry upon the sheep. Oh my God. So, a, a bona fide vision should not be causative, should not be vain. Are you there? It should exalt Christ if it's from God. It should save souls. That's B. It should be accurate. That's C. It should edify the church and edify mankind. That's D. Hmm? It, it should correct what needs correction. That's E. And it should clarify where there is confusion. Oh, I thought my dream was just from the Lord. It's from the Lord, you know. I was fasting three days. No, it takes a lot more qualification. Like, like how some folks just get up and say they are God. And don't know that it, to qualify to be God is not just to be a good man. It's not just to feed the poor, help me here. It's not just to help the homeless. You have to never sin. <laughs> you have to be sinless. <laughs> to be God. To get a vision from God is a high requirement. I'm in trouble here tonight. I'm in trouble here tonight. Dr. Kishiki how to dissect dream uh, it can be causative it can be vain some of the, the categories I'm going to give it some positive some negative number three another type of dream is a multiple of dreams a multi, you just get a lot of dreams if you get a lot of dreams that's a category by itself just the fact that you get a, a lot of dreams can be very negative. Are you there? Mm. Glory to God. I need his verse, but I, 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 I don't I, I need his verse. It says, in the multitude of dream is vanity. Anybody got that one? In the multitude of dreams. I, I, I really need that one. My God, my God, my God. I believe you. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. But you can't give me later. Let me hear it. Ecclesiastes 5 and verse 7. Yes, it's in the... Oh, my God. Thank you. My God. It says, in the multitude of dreams, what is now, and many words, there are also diverse vanity, but fear of the Lord. So, if there is a if you get a lot of dreams you're always dreaming that's a category by itself it has to be known why so many dreams are you there 
Glory to God. Because you can get a lot of dreams from a spirit of fear. You can get a lot of dreams from confusion. You can get a lot of dreams from stress. Mm, you can get a lot of dreams from anxiousness. Just being anxious about something. Are you there? Some multiple. But God has positive and proper multiple dreams. Hosea 12 verse 10. He said, I have also spoken by the prophets. Listen to this. And I have multiplied visions and used similitudes by the ministry of the prophets. So, <laughs> in order for you to get positive of multiple dreams and visions, you've got to have the ministry of a prophet. You mean you have the office of a prophet, or you may be a pastor in charge of a lot of folks, maybe, you know, 50, 100 or more people. So God, because you have to minister and edify all these people, then you will carry multiple. You'll get a lot. You'll get a lot of dreams, a lot of visions. Are you there? Glory to God. I must also explain again that multiple dreams, the negative part of it is when a brother, a sister, gets more than his necessary share of dreams. And when he gets more than his necessary share, it's not from God. It comes from fear, it comes from stress, it comes from anxiousness, it comes from anxiety, it comes from confusion to get a lot of dreams. Glory to God. I must also say that there is priority in hearing from God. First, when you get a dream, if it's from the Lord, it, is, it must first be applied to the seer. Second, if it doesn't apply, then it be applied to the sinner. If it doesn't apply, then it applies to the saints. To the saints. As a matter of fact, the one, two, three should be the other way around. One is the seer, two, the saints, and three, the sinner. Are you there? And every now and then they apply to all because some, some believers need some hard sinner sermon. Some hard sinner revelation from God. Somebody say, How did I say dreams? So how much you learned so far? Hit me, hit me if you, if you got them. Yeah, number one, what is it? Causative dreams. Number two, come on, vain dreams. Number three, what? Multiple dreams. And the fourth kind of dream or vision is what we call spurious. S-P-U-R-I-O-U-S. Sorry for this big word, but all it means is fake. It's false. It's not real. It's not genuine. Are you there? Mm, it may be impressive, but it's not genuine. Oh, it may be publicized, but it's not genuine. Are you there? It's spurious. Mm. And, and even spurious dreams can come from good people. We had some good people who made some prophecies in the past three years, and they did not come to pass. So we're not trying to put them down. We're just trying to explain uh, about dreams, spurious dreams and spurious visions. Jeremiah 23 verse 28, he says, The prophet that had a dream, let him tell a dream. And he that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. Hear this. What is the shaft to the wheat, said the Lord? If you don't have a dream or vision from God, just use the Bible. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Don't feel that there was a necessity. I remember when we prophesied of the, of the Japan earthquake in 2000, I believe on 11, when we prophesied, this thing shook so many that we had an 80s contact us and said, and said I'm impressed. I'm impressed. An 80s. And then he said, if you will give me some more prophecy right now, I'll promote you. Hey, listen to me. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. So we told him, prophecy is not according to demand and supply. <laughs> prophecy have to come from God. 
you may be a true prophet and you may have hit 100 times and you prophesied 100 times in the past and you try to make 101 though you're a, a prophet of the past who have been correct and you went by demand come on somebody and you will go wrong you will go wrong you will you will go wrong if you went by demand you will go wrong you will go wrong you will go wrong oh there's an election coming i gotta prophesy who's gonna win you will be wrong that's demand and supply spurious 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 glory to god spurious dream is is like a subconscious dream like an experience and it also comes from demand and supply trying to fill demand it also comes from idolatry it also comes from diviners it also comes from human humanism and it also comes from animism animism is a form of divination and folks who, who, who go into all these kind of a, a spiritual idolatry etc dream a lot too diviners dream a lot voodoo workers dream a lot are you there glory to god that's number four number five unqualified dreams unqualified dreams unqualified dreams glory to god second corinthians uh, let me give you the, john 8 and verse 47 he says he that is of god hear it god's word somebody say amen leave a hand if you're of god come on hear this one now ye therefore hear them not because you are not of god Jesus. So many who are against dreams and visions and revelations from God is because they are not of God. You will never convince them, they'll never get it. The Bible said the natural man understandeth not the things of the Spirit of God, neither can he know them because they are spiritually what? Discerned. Ronda Kashaka Baba. So you're not of God. And let me give you some categories of the, of the unqualified, unsaved. That's one. Number two, a heretic, a person who always coming up with false doctrine, errors backslidden number three rebellious number four cursed malicious unforgiving sexual sin unproven there are many folks who are quick to get revelation especially for somebody that is famous did you know that some folks in order to get some hits on their v on their youtube report their youtube uh, uh, um channel they try to always say they got a word for this famous man and this famous person while you're there and get themselves in big trouble glory to god glory to god and some say i, I got a revelation for the pastor too oh you don't like that part you know i gotta get a revelation for that man that god no god will not give the sheep a revelation for the shepherd Oh, nobody want to explain these things nobody want to explain these things if god want to minister to the shepherd he'll minister to someone who has the access to the shepherd oh my god Amen. a lot of churches have that problem a hundred members and they always get a word for the past and most time if it's the past it's a negative word I don't want to show that, you know, I, I get an access. No, no, no. God will never give the sheep a word to damage the shepherd. Come on. Anybody heard of, anybody heard of Nathan and David? If, if God had given that revelation uh, to somebody mm -hmm, in the nation of Israel, all the time he spent in training David would all be thrown away. God is more wise than that. And we learned last night as we were speaking that even long after David sinned and then he asked God for and God raised him up close to his death, Nathan was still serving him and honoring him. So God made sure that, 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 the, that the kingship was not, mm, come on, was not damaged. 
So when you see they come and say, I have a word, I have a word, I got a revelation of the pastor. Here is, here is a nice point. On a nice part, if it's a good revelation, it, it's for the pastor. My God of mercy. We don't want no clarity. I said, we don't want any clarity. We don't want, if it's a good revelation, it's for the pastor. <laughs> because it can't hurt the pastor. Look at that. Come on, somebody. Are you there? It can't hurt you. Come on. Anybody can get a revelation. <laughs> Say, we got a good pastor. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brother. You don't want any clarity. But if it's negative, it didn't come from God. Come you don't want no clarity here. Oh, God. You're going to have 200 members, and God going to give the survival of the pastorship to 200 sheep. It would never stand for a day. Come on. Because one little, one level, level the whole lamp. Yes. 299 good revelations and one bad one destroyed. You don't want any help. Oh, thank you, Lord. Are you there? You want clarity? So, you know, be respectful, you know, but it's not bona fide. It's not from God. Don't take up a burden. No, my mission, I saw a vision about the past. If it's good, it's good. It's not God, it's not from God. God gonna bring another prophet. God gonna bring another colleague. God gonna bring something that when it's dealt with, the pastorship is saved. Bible! And what, once it's been broken down, it didn't come from God. Oh, look at this. Nobody wants clarity like this. Once it's damaging the pulpit, it didn't come from God. Those who rise to damage a pulpit carry several spirits. One of it is the spirit of Jezebel. Come on. The spirit of Belial and the spirit of the beast that seek to damage a pulpit. Are you there? You must even be careful. You know, you're not going to like this one. You never try to preach on your spiritual leader. He can preach on you. <laughs> I'm going to give up the mic. You never, you never hear clarity like this in your life. He can preach on you. He can almost call your name. Oh, yes. oh Ricky, it is But you can't preach on him. Come on. You can curse yourself. Come on. But if I never hear this in church or plain in their life. When he preach on you, come on, it's that precious oil. You know, you don't want any clarity. You don't want any clarity. So you're fighting preacher preach on you. You're fighting a leader preach on you. When he preach on you, the Bible says he's anointed to lift you up. You got precious ointment upon your head. But there you are. Oh, I saw that he's this and he's that. And you come in the pulpit with your sermon. Listen, be careful. You can curse yourself. God, I never hear it so plain. Tonight we're talking about how to what? Dissect dreams. Are we getting somewhere? Oh, yes. How much we are? How much we have so far? Five. Name me the number one. What? Causative. I'm gonna run. Number two. What? Vain. Number three. Multiple. Number five. Number four. Spurious. Number five. Unqualified. Number six. Unrealized. You can have a dream and didn't know it was a dream. Many folks who were, who went, who almost died, they call it near-death experience, they had dreams and they claim they didn't have a dream. They say, I went to hell and came back. I saw Satan and, and I saw this and that and they come back in the spirit and say, no, 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 no. And say, I went to hell and I came back. No, 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 they had a dream. Come on. Even people today, even you're not sick. Some folks, the thing you claim to see, you just saw a dream. Unrealized. Unrealized. My God, you got quiet at this one. My God, I can't shame. Bishop, you can't tell me. You can't tell me I didn't see, see that movement to the, to the window. You can't tell me, oh, yes, I saw a bird fly through the window, but the window is closed. <laughs> Come on now. Bishop, I saw a cow 
people walking into the church. <laughs> you know what I'm I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. But, uh, you had a dream. You had a dream. You had a quick dream. If you didn't have a dream, you need a pension. You need some attention. You're there. You need some prayer. You're there. Are you get me? Let me stay vague. You need some prayer. Otherwise, you saw a dream. If you see a car walking through there, you got a dream. A quick. <laughs> oh, my. I'm trying not to. Glory to God. You had a quick dream. Shiva car. Second Corinthians 12, verse 1. It is not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory, Paul said. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in, in Christ about 40 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell. Oh, Shiva Makata. This is Paul. Say, I can't tell. I saw something, but I can't tell. I don't know. But we saw deep. We saw deep in God. You can, yes, yes, I saw it. I saw it when the cow jumped through the window. Whether in the body, I cannot tell. Or whether out of the body, I cannot tell. God knew it. Such a one caught up to the third heaven. I knew such a man within the body or out of the body. I cannot tell God know it. Are you there? Unrealized. A quick dream. A vision. Glory to God. So don't listen to those folks who come with a big doctrine about near death experience. It's dangerous. It's not of God. The six, seven now. Flashes. 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 Flashes is seeing a vision in a quick second. In a quick second. In a moment. In a couple of seconds. Quickly. You'll see a quick image. Glory to God. Glory to God. Ezekiel 1 14. And the living creatures ran and returned. This is a dream, dream that Ezekiel was having. And the living creatures run and return as the appearance well, of a flash of lightning. Quick. You can see a whole story in three seconds. It's called flashes. Like a few seconds. Number eight. Unscoped. Unscoped. The word scope means that when God minister and raise up prophets and dreamers and visionaries and watchmen and seers they have different scope what scope means scope mean the limit or the expanse to which he has anointed you he may anoint you with personal visions and that's like domestic he may anoint you with local national regional or global so you may receive revelation and it's unscoped. There's no limit as to whether it's personal, hit me, or local, come on now, or national, or regional, or global. It's unscoped. That's another type. There is no scope about it. Glory to God. Jeremiah 1 verse 5. It said, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet uh, 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 unto the nations. Glory to God. Somebody say, how to dissect? Dreams. Hit me with the eight, and I'll give you one more. What's the first type? Is causative. Number two, vain. Number three, multiple. Number four, spurious. Number five, unqualified. Number six, Unrealized, number seven, flashes, number eight, unscoped. This last one is tranced. 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 What is a trance? A trance is where the human body is dislodged for a moment from the norms. And God is able to deal with you at another level. That's similar to when we, the Pentecostal use the word, when folks fall in the spirit or slain in the spirit. You may lay hand on somebody or they may feel the Holy Ghost and they fall. And for a little moment they fall asleep. Remember the sleep is not the vision. 
The sleep is the atmosphere. The sleep is the condition that they are in now that is ripe for revelation. And that's why sometimes when you see they fall to the ground, you try to help them that they don't get hurt, but don't be quick to take them up. Leave them for a moment. Let them get their dream. Sometimes that dream while they're in the trance will change your life. Can change a country. Just leave them for some folks try to stop them. No, 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 no. Make sure protect them. But let them go down for a moment. You only take them up when you see it, it, it seems as if they have revived. And God speak to them. I remember there were some brethren who came here and they had looked, I heard them testify that they had looked at the move of God from eight years ago. And when they looked, they, they had just gotten married and they looked and they, as new believers, they wanted to, to go and minister on the street, but they were scared. But, when, but they looked and they saw a ministry being involved in Worldwide Vision Day. And the husband and wife talked to each other and said, look at that. The very thing that we are scared of. Look at those young people preaching all over the world. Where did it happen? Eight years later, they came to a promised land. Glory to God. And hands were laid on them and they fell to the ground. And the following day, they were preaching on the street. They had an experience. Are you there? So it's called Transvision transvision but god have even allowed some folks to be in trans for days for weeks and when they get up the stuff that came out of them was so powerful they call trans dreams are you there numbers 24 verse 4 he had said which heard the words of god which saw the vision of the almighty falling into a trance it's right there in the bible but having his eyes open, it means that this person was in a trance. Hmm. Was in a trance with their eyes open. Glory to God. I mean, they were in the spirit. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. I'm going to say, if I get another scripture, Acts 10 and verse 9. He says, on the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew nigh unto the city, Peter went up to the house top to pray about the sixth hour. Verse 10. And he became very hungry and would have eaten. But while, while they made ready, he fell into a trance. Oh, rakatabakaya, man. Rakatabakaya, man. God can use a trance to, to take you out of the norms of the society. To take you out of the influences. To take you out of the attacks. For a moment. To minister to you because the situation around is very dangerous right now as the beast has, uh, has come against the body of Christ have come against the church have come against the world every now and then God will bring somebody he will, he will give his own conditions to speak to them he fell into a trance hear this now and saw heaven open and certain vessel descending upon him as it had been a great sheet knit at four corners and let down to the earth. And more scripture, Acts 11 verse 5, Acts 22, 17. Will you stand everybody? Glory to God. And next time we'll tell you what to do when you get a dream first to know it's from God. And after you know if it's from God, then what to do? Woo, 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 woo. You can get 30 instructions. Glory to God. 30 instructions. No, oh, to dream is not some normal thing. We just get a dream and we just begin to interpret it. We're going to tell our friends. And especially if it's negative about somebody, we go tell Brother Brown, tell Sister Jane, and never even seek for a qualified interpreter before we damage somebody's reputation. Right. And if it's not damaging and it's even good, if it's not the truth, it's not the truth. Are you there, somebody? God, yeah, it's a, it's a lot of requirement. Glory to God. That's why God say you should not even accept too much. You should not be multiple. And if it's one from God, we've got to qualify ourselves. We've got to work on it. If you don't know what to do with it, we've got to seek for an interpreter. Seek prof prophet uh, to unravel, to pray about it. Even the fact that as we get it, we begin to come to conclusions. It's already proved it didn't come from God. Because God will not easily allow one to tear down the other. Nowadays, you get revelation, we just want to tear down each other. It's mainly to edify. 
Moses the time if it's to damage but God will do it privately I don't say God can sometime when, when things get out of hand have to do something public I don't say God won't do that but much of the dreams and visions we hear we just, we just have to humble ourselves humble ourselves before God and ensure that it's from him but the Bible says dear not a prophecy come to pass Dear not a dream come to pass. I listen. Dear not a vision come to pass unless it came from God. Read that verse, and I'm going to close with it. Read that verse. Lamentations 3, verse 37. I'm going to leave it at that verse. We're talking about how to dissect dreams, how to dissect visions, how to know some God. Or not from God. How to know if it is vain. How to know if it is causative. How to know if it's unqualified. How to know if it's spurious. My God, my God. You got that verse? Yes. Let's read it together. One, two, three. Come on now. Who is he that saith? Who is he that saith? And is it to pass? And it cometh to pass. And it cometh to pass. When the Lord commanded it not. 